Are you using one of these Anense Z6 boxes? But it looks like this on the display. Your gauge is covering it up and it's scooted over. Well, if so, I may have a fix for you. Recently, Anense updated the software for the Z6. They're trying to make their boxes compatible with more infotainment systems. But unfortunately with this update, it scooted the display over on the Harley Davidson. So your gauges are now covering up part of the display. So I worked with Anense and they're offering a fix for it. And we have to download that fix and then apply it to the Z6. And then once again, it'll display correctly on the Harley Davidson's. To load this update, we're gonna use the USB-A port on the Z6 box. So the USB-C port will be connected to the bike for power, and then it'll read the USB-A drive to get the update. So you're gonna need a thumb drive that is USB-A. Now I'm gonna use my Mac to set this up. And my Mac does not have a USB-A port. So I'm gonna have to use a USB-A to USB-C adapter so I can put this thumb drive in my Mac. They provide these instructions to get the update. And I will be happy to email this to you. So just reach out, my email address is right here, and I will email you these. So if we take a look here, they want us to download a file. The file is on a dropbox.com address. Now keep in mind, if you're using a company computer, a lot of companies are blocking Dropbox, so keep that in mind. So we'll click on the link, and that will ask us to open it up in a browser. I'm gonna open it in Chrome. And here we go, here's the Dropbox file. And here we go, here's the page. It says it's too big to load, but it gives us a download option. I'm gonna ignore the cookies over here, I'm just gonna close that. If we hit the drop down, we can say just download. So we'll hit download, and then it says, hey, sign in. Well, I don't wanna sign into Dropbox, so I'm just gonna say, or continue with download only. And so it'll download that file and we'll see it's downloading. And once it's complete, we'll open up the downloads folder and there it is. So z3box.zip. The instructions say to put the zip file on the thumb drive as is. So do not extract it. You're just gonna copy the file directly over. So this is my downloads folder, and I'm gonna open up my thumb drive. So with a thumb drive inserted into my Mac, I now have two windows. So the thumb drive and then my downloads folder. Now they're very clear that you need the zip file on the thumb drive by itself, and I have some other files here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase my thumb drive. So we'll right click on it and we'll do erase disk. Make sure you don't need any of those files. So we'll erase it and it, I've noted that it's important to have it as MS-DOS FAT. So your drive must be formatted as FAT32. Otherwise the box won't see it. If you format it EX FAT, which many of these thumb drives are, it won't show up to the AI box, so it won't do the update. So very important that you select MS-DOS FAT32, and I'll just name it Z6 Fix. We'll erase that. It'll warn us that we're gonna lose all the files on the drive. It'll eject, and then it'll return. So here it is, Z6 Fix, and it's empty. So we're gonna take the Z3 box.zip and drag it over and let go, and it'll copy over. It's a gigabyte, so it may take a little bit of time to get there. Now I know the file name is z3.zip, and we're installing this on the Z6 box. That's okay, I think it's gonna work, but we'll find out. The copy's complete, so we'll right click and we'll do eject, and we'll take the thumb drive over to the bike. The instructions note then once we boot the box, it will automatically start the upgrade process, which can take three to five minutes. During the upgrade process, the blue light will stay on and the green light will blink slowly. Do not power off during the upgrade process. So you may wanna make sure your bike is on a tender because this could take a little bit of time to complete. Then they note that when the, both the red and green lights start to flash rapidly, the upgrade is complete and you can unplug the flash drive. 
At that point, the box is going to boot automatically two to three times. And you're going to have to wait for that process to work. So the bike, as we know, has issues once the box starts to reboot and it won't reconnect. So I think we'll just pay attention to the lights. They note that if you see all three colored indicators staying on at the same time, unplug the box and power it back on. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we have our Z6 connected with the USB-A drive connected to the bike through my Madehawk adapter. So we'll power on the bike using the accessory mode by holding down the trip switch and the bike will begin to boot and eventually we'll see power to the Z6 and we'll pay attention to the indicator lights. So our headset is connected and now we have a blue light and a green light has appeared. So this is gonna blink slowly for the next three to five minutes. And the bike has nothing on the screen. It just connected the headset, but the box is not trying to boot. So again, we're gonna watch the green light blink slowly for the next several minutes. Keep an eye on it. I've got my five amp battery tender plugged into the bike. And if you remember, with the 23 and a halfs, the tender is not allowed to charge the battery when it's in accessory mode. So I have it plugged directly into my starter. So that allows the battery to charge while it's in accessory mode. It's gonna be a while, so we're gonna need it on a tender to keep the bike alive for potentially five minutes of update here. On the 24s or the 25s, you don't have to worry about it. So you can actually just plug into the tender lead and it'll keep your battery charged even in accessory mode. So now we have the red and green blinking, indicating that the update is complete and the box may reboot several times. So far, I've not seen it reboot and my suspicion is we're gonna to have to shut the bike off at this point. But I'm gonna give it just a couple of minutes here. All right, so it's been several minutes and I still have just a blue light and a blinking green and red which indicates that the update is done and the box is supposed to restart, but I don't think it's gonna work with the bike. So let's just power the bike off. So we'll hold down the trip switch. The bike will go off. We'll give it a second to go to sleep. So we'll see the lights go off on the box. And on the CVO, I have lighted controls. So I just wait for these to go off before I turn it back on. Okay, so now what we'll do is remove the thumb drive because apparently the update is done. So we'll pull the thumb drive out and we'll boot the bike. Okay, so now it's booted with our headset connected and I have a blue and blinking green light blinking slowly. So let's see what happens with the light pattern here. I suspect it's gonna reboot. All right, so now we've got a solid green and a solid red. And what they noted is when you see that, you should power it off. So I think we'll power the bike off again here. So we'll hold down the trip switch and we'll let the bike go to sleep. We'll hold the trip switch down and we'll let it boot here for the second time. We'll keep an eye on the lights. All right, on this reboot, we now have a solid blue and a blinking red. And Android Auto is starting to boot on the bike. And then we can already tell it's scooted over and it's displaying correctly. This is really a good sign. Since the box was factory reset, this boot up could take a bit longer than what we're used to. So we'll wait it out. Here comes the box and there we go. Our Z6 is on the display and displaying correctly. So we can agree, and there we go, displaying correctly. Our Speedo is no longer covering up the Android interface, and it's scooted all the way over. So the fix worked, how about that? One of the advantages of the Z6 box over some of the other models is that it has built-in GPS. So what that means is you could plug this into the bike, boot it up, and then load Google Maps, put your destination in here, and download the maps for that area, and you could navigate with just the box. So not having to connect your phone to it or use Android Auto. 
So if you were traveling across a border and you didn't want to pay international charges on your phone, you could switch to the box and just use it for navigation, leaving your phone off and not occurring those data charges. So I had another viewer report that his CAO1 was not working and they offered him a download for it as well. And he sent me that CAO1, which is this one. And I plugged it into my bike and it's working well. But I'm not sure if he attempted to apply the update or not. But as far as I know, it's only the Z6 that is having the display issue. And if you're having any challenges setting up these boxes, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. My email address is right here. I'm always happy to help through the setup. I do want to thank the Anunce company. They've been very responsive to any support requests and they were quick to get us a fix for the Z6. I also want to give a shout out to Rick for helping us troubleshoot this and working with us. Really appreciate you and uh, your idea for using the GPS on the other side of the border. So at the end of this video, I'll put a card up to more information about these Anunce boxes. They are unique in that they work with the display on the Harley Davidson. Most of these AI boxes do not display correctly. And it's not that they're just scooted over, they're actually stretched out. So the resolution is wrong and there is no fix for those. I've never found one. So other than this bug with the Z6, which we now have a fix for, I've had no issues with the Nensei boxes working on the new Harley Davidsons. So check that video out if you're interested in learning more and I'll put links in the descriptions to all the boxes if you want to check them out. Appreciate the support. I really hope you found this information useful and if you did, maybe you'll subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I thank you for viewing and returning. But until next time, in the Friction Zone,